Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going to take a look at gas exchange. Now to begin, I wanna show you what I've drawn up on the board. So firstly, I've drawn up our alveoli. Now, you may say this looks like a single alveolus. This alveoli represent, this alveolus that I've drawn represents every alveoli in our lungs, okay? So it's representative of all the alveoli. We've got the blood flow going past the alveoli. So remember, we're going to have coming from the right side of the heart, specifically the right ventricle, pumping out via the pulmonary trunk through the pulmonary artery, predominantly deoxygenated blood, which goes from the pulmonary artery into these pulmonary capillaries. This is where gas exchange occurs. Then on the other end, we've got a pulmonary vein, and the pulmonary veins go back to the left-hand side of the heart, to the left atria, then to the left ventricle, which will then contract and pump blood out via the aorta that will go to the whole body and its various branches will ultimately turn into capillaries. Again, gas exchange occurring here. And then we've got veins, so the venous system going back to the vena cava, back to the right atrium, to the right ventricle, and the whole process begins again. Simply what we have here is the pulmonary circulation and here we have the systemic circulation. All right, so we know what we're looking at now. Next thing is that we need to understand the various gases in the atmosphere and how these gases change when they get to the alveoli. So we know that the atmosphere that we breathe is made up of gases that all contribute to an overall pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury at sea level. That's the overall pressure of the atmosphere around us. And like I said, it's made up of multiple gases. We know it's made up of nitrogen, it's made up of oxygen, it's made up of carbon dioxide, and it's made up of various other trace gases. Now simply put, it's the combination of these gases added together that gives us 760 millimeters of mercury. So what we call each gas and its contribution is its partial pressure. So you often see it with a P placed in front. So for example, the partial pressure of nitrogen is around about 590-ish millimeters of mercury. Oxygen is around about 159 millimeters of mercury. And carbon dioxide is around about 0.3 millimeters of mercury. Now, there's other trace gases. If you add them up, they're going to approximately hit that 760. Now, the thing is this, we don't need to focus on nitrogen in this video because we're only gonna talk about gases that are important to exchange in our body, which include oxygen and carbon dioxide. If we start talking about high or lower altitudes or maybe diving physiology, then we'll start to introduce nitrogen. But let's focus on oxygen and carbon dioxide. That's their partial pressure in the atmosphere. When we inhale, that air, this gas slightly changes. So for example, the oxygen, its partial pressure, once it hits the alveolus, ends up being around about 104 millimeters of mercury. Now look at that. So it goes from 159 down to 104. So it drops, the partial pressure drops. That means we've lost some oxygen. So where have we lost this oxygen? Well, two main places. As the oxygen moves through that respiratory tract, through the nasal cavity, pharynx, trachea, and so forth, some of that oxygen gets taken up by water. And so it helps humidify our tract. So we lose it through humidification, binding with that water. The other thing that happens is we know that that oxygen, once it's in the alveolus, loves to jump into that pulmonary circulation. It gets taken out. So again, we're reducing the amount of oxygen. That's why in the alveolus, it's 104 millimeters of mercury. Now the carbon dioxide, when that gets into the alveolus, we're gonna find that the carbon dioxide level ends up being 40 millimeters of mercury. That's a big jump. It goes from being 0.3 millimeters of mercury to 40 millimeters of mercury. Why? Because we know in the alveolus, carbon dioxide likes to jump out of the pulmonary capillaries into the alveolus, increasing that partial pressure. So now we've set the scene. Here's the next thing. In order for gases to move from one place to the next, they must go down their own concentration gradient, their own partial pressure gradient. So what we first need to do is highlight what is the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the pulmonary artery coming through. So let's have a look. If we have a look first of all at, let's do oxygen. The partial pressure of oxygen here is going to be 40 millimeters of mercury. 
That's the first thing. Second thing is carbon, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide coming through is 45 millimeters of mercury. So I want to highlight an important point here. Any time gas moves from one point to the next, it must go down its own partial pressure gradient. So I like to draw it up as a slide, for example. So here's a slide. If we've got the highest concentration of oxygen being 104 up here, that's the alveolus, and down here, it's 40, you can see it's quite a steep gradient. Oxygen will move down the slide. Costs no energy, that's just what it wants to do. Let's have a look at carbon dioxide. We know it goes from here to here. So its highest concentration is here in the pulmonary artery and its lowest is here in the alveolus. But look at the difference, 45 to 40. So it's not as steep as this one. So let's draw it up. We've got the slide and it's not as steep. So we've got 45 here and 40 there. Again, it's still going down a concentration gradient, but like I said, it's not as steep. Here's an interesting point. Even though the partial pressure gradients for oxygen and carbon dioxide are very different, the same amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide is exchanged at the, alve at the alveolus here with the pulmonary capillaries, the same amount. Now, why is this the case? This is why. Carbon dioxide, is 20 times more soluble than oxygen is. So carbon dioxide wants to cross this respiratory membrane. It wants to. Oxygen, less so. The way I think about it is like this. Even though it's not as steep here for carbon dioxide, it really wants to go down that slide. But here for oxygen, it needs a push. Someone needs to push it, first of all, to get down that slide. So that's why carbon dioxide, 20 times more soluble across that respiratory membrane. All right, so as this blood goes past, think about this, that right ventricle, it's going to contract and it's gonna push blood out of the right ventricle at four liters per minute. This is what we call the cardiac output. Importantly, the left ventricle is gonna push blood out at four liters per minute. Again, cardiac output. So the equivalent amount of blood being pushed out of the left ventricle is going to be equivalent to the right ventricle. Every minute, four liters is pumped out. Now, this four liters is just going to the alveoli to get oxygenated and to remove that carbon dioxide. And the way I think about it, amazingly, is you end up, this branches off, these pulmonary capillaries, you end up having around about 280 billion pulmonary capillaries, which are feeding or I should say, which are articulating and hugging the surfaces of around about four to 500 million alveoli. Huge. Together, you add up the surface area, the possible surface area for gas exchange, it ends up being around about 70 square meters, around about the size of a tennis court is possible there for gas exchange. Absolutely amazing. So as this gas moves past, what you can see is Oxygen must go down its pressure gradient. Carbon dioxide must go down its pressure gradient. And then you get an equilibration. It equilibrates once it hits this pulmonary vein. And so the partial pressures of each that you get here is for oxygen, the partial pressure ends up being 100 millimeters of mercury. And here, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide ends up being 40 millimeters of mercury. And then that's going to be moving through now the systemic circulation once it goes from the left atrium, left ventricle via the aorta, through all the aortic branches, and then it gets to the capillaries of the systemic circulation, and now gas exchange needs to occur again. So again, whatever is here is going to be here. So the partial pressure of oxygen here is 100 millimetres of mercury, and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide here is 40 millimeters of mercury, and then it gets to here. So we now need to know what's the partial pressure of these gases in the tissue. So it's really difficult to measure the pressure of gases inside tissues, but what we do know is that the partial pressure of oxygen here is going to be, and partial pressure of carbon dioxide, of course, is going to be, when it comes to carbon dioxide, it's going to be less than 40, and, uh, sorry, it's going to be greater than 45, and for, uh, for oxygen, it's going to be less than, it's going to be less than 40. So what ends up happening 
is the oxygen that goes past 100 to 40. It jumps down its pressure gradient. And for carbon dioxide, as it moves through, because these tissues are producing carbon dioxide, remember, you take that oxygen that's in here, you take glucose, for example, chuck it in the mitochondria, it produces ATP and carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And we end up producing, I'll make that a little bit nicer, 45, greater than 45 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure of carbon dioxide here, which is higher than 40, and so it jumps out. And so by the time we get to the venous system, what do we have? The same concentration as what we do here. So the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be what? 40 millimeters of mercury, and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is gonna be 45 millimeters of mercury. And then that goes through again, the left atrium, left ventricle, four liters per minute, and gas exchange occurs. So again, the take home message when it comes to the gas exchange is this. Gases will only move down their own pressure gradient, which we call the partial pressure gradient. It changes from atmosphere to alveoli, to pulmonary artery, to pulmonary vein to what we call the arterial system of the systemic circulation, to the venous system of the systemic circulation, and then back again. So hopefully that helps when it comes to gas exchange.